Went on vacation, lots of times, come out here to Montana, and uh, always told myself I'm gonna live out here someday. And in 86, I decided I'm gonna work my way around the country, and this is where I ended up. A, a husband in 1993, a husband and a daddy found me, and that was as far as I went, was Lewistown, Montana, and today I'm in White Sulphur picking up garbage. Other people's trash is other people's treasures, you know. And there's never a boring moment. <laughs> We called this route and going through some of the garbage. One time, I picked a bag out of a barrel. That's when we used to have the 55 gallon drums. It was a black bag, it was heavy, and I thought it was kitty litter. I didn't think too much of it, and I flung it in the back of the hopper, and it broke, and pennies went all over. And I shoveled pennies into a box, put them in the truck, and took them home, and I washed them all off. And I think my wife took them to the bank where the counter, she had something like $134 in pennies. There were three gallons of pennies. Well, and that happens quite frequently where you find stuff like that. I've known Zeke for some years now. We both worked in radiator shops and he even asked me to check out Amway with him at one time. But I failed to talk to him about Jesus. And I've often wondered, you know, why he never why he never knocked on my door five, six, eight, ten years ago. Yeah, I even actually one day rode over to Zeke's place and chickened out, turned around, went home. My biggest find, I, I believe the most valuable thing to me that I have ever found was the Conflict of Ages series by Ellen White. Actually, because we grew up with, my dad had one years and years ago when he was probably 10, 12 years old, a German one. But it was only the first book, the Patriarchs and Prophets one. And I remember with kid, as we were kids growing up, my brother Paul and I, my sister Margaret, and uh, we would read those bo that book and grew up, so I was kind of familiar with it. I was born and raised on a Hutterite colony in the uh, northeast corner of South Dakota and uh, had a very strong religious upbringing, that kind of stuff, did a lot of work on the colony. They taught communal living and communal lifestyle that we, we have all things in common, kind of out of the, the second chapter of the book of Acts, they have all things in common, you know, they're, their uh, goods and everything they sold and they shared with everybody so nobody had want or need you know they shared everything and that was how it started and they went through the, the during the time about the, the reformers the the chronicles of the Hutterites the history which which I never read that much of and I kind of wished I would have while I was there but I never did when I was 17 years of age I run away from home and uh, I got into all kinds of trouble. I, I drank a bottle of whiskey a day, and there was a time in my life, I had reached a time when I was miserable drinking and I was miserable being sober, and there was no, not much use left to live. Why live? And I was gonna do myself in. And I remember, I was living in Watertown, South Dakota one time, and I was heading east out of Watertown to work, and the interstate pillar was out there and I was going to drive my car wide open right into that interstate pillar. And uh, I broke out in a cold sweat and I remember it was 20 below zero and I'm driving 32 mile an hour and I, I, I turned around at the next turn around I went back home and I didn't go to work that day. And I spent that day by my couch on my knees in front of the with prayer. For a long time the Lord has put on my heart to go and see him and I chickened out. Oh, yes. Dad always talked about that there was a series of them and he, and he never never had the others. You know, so that to me was a valuable find. That that was priceless to me. Whoever had them read them and they did a lot of highlighting in it, you know, which don't bother me none. 
they were in good shape and to me it was worth the find the most valuable find of all I think I found a gun one time that wasn't even as much as as finding those things I even when I found it I looked at it and I couldn't believe that somebody would throw these away and thank you Lord yes this was worth it you know that tremendous wisdom and knowledge of the scripture I should say the father's word because he is our father you know we are his children the father's word and the interpretation thereof that th that wisdom is un it's priceless I still got them at home I read them daily I was teaching Sunday school one time at a church where I went to and and we went through the book of Ezekiel and I came to Ezekiel chapter 20 Okay, and where, where, God's, where God says the Sabbath day is a sign between you and me that you may know who I am. Okay, God speaking. And uh, I brought this up in the church and I never knew leaders in the church could, be, could get so upset because I dare bring up the Sabbath day. You know, I, I like that Ezekiel 2020, Zeke has 2020 vision, you know. Someday I'm going to get a license plate and it's going to fit just perfect. <laughs> But that's what I plan, you know, that's been my walk. I've, I've gone to a lot of different churches over the years, and I would always f hear this, where the law was done away with at the cross, the Ten Commands do not apply, and then I'm, why are they in there then? One preacher even told me one time, you may not even be welcome here, you know, because, because of some of the questions that I asked pertaining to the Sabbath day for number one. And uh, I have always thought about going to the Seventh Day Adventist Church and, and the minister told me one time, the last pastor that I had, if you really want to get into legalism, that's what you'll get into. And I got to thinking, you know, how can that be possible? When they teach the Father's Word, you know, thy word is a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my path, the Father's Word. And God spake all these words saying, and you can sit in Sunday school and talk about, we ought to be obedient and not to sacrifice. It's better to obey than to sacrifice. Obey what? The Father's word. And God spake all these words saying, I am the Lord thy God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. I know them Ten Commands by heart. You know, I learned them. And, uh, and, uh, so why don't they apply? That's been my question. It was another week before I went back. Hey! Hey! Hey, Zeke! Yeah, nice to uh, see you! Yes. All right. How you? Hey, come on in. All right. Come on, come on yeah. in. Yeah. Don't want to stand outside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, right. what's up? Oh, I just coming by, you know, it's like we've been uh, talking and stuff about doing some studying and stuff together and everything, and I was just kind of coming over to see how um, we got this seminar going on, and I'd just like to invite you to it. Oh, like that prophecy seminar thing I yeah, read about? Yeah, the pro the yeah, yeah that's the hey, same what one. What took you so long? You know, I've known you for eight years or better. You know, yeah, I'd love to. All right, all so, right. So hey, you don't have a flyer or something you could give me? Well, if I don't write nothing down, I, I kind of yeah, I, I went and I you forgot them, but I'm gonna bring them back. Okay. Hey, we All don't right. lock our house. Stick it in the house or stick it in the mailbox. Okay, I'll Come stick it by. in the mailbox for okay. you. And then we sat for a roundabout for a couple of hours and we talked about different things from the scriptures about the, the law and the commands. I just had a fantastic visit that whole evening with him. I'm a janitor for Fergus Electric and Courtesy Chevrolet in Lewistown, Montana. I became Christian 14 years ago and I don't want anybody anymore to come to me and say what was it that took you so long to come and visit me? You don't want that happening to you either. So I just implore you today when the Lord speaks to you just get out there and 
do what he has, what he tells you to do. If he tells you to invite someone to some of these meetings, get out there and do it. Don't be a chicken like I was. Don't be afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of. The Lord is there and he's going to go before us. I'm sure glad Carl finally decided to do that and did that. And, and I was so excited to be, to be coming to their prophecy seminars that they were having. And what I realized, didn't realize is, and I found out from that is, Jesus is coming back soon. This, this past Sabbath day when I got baptized, it was, it was very, it was a very relaxing time. I was, I was nervous. I will say that, because I had all those people watching, and I get, I get stage fright real easy, and, and uh, and after baptism, it was like this garbage can, this I just dumped, it's empty, it's, it's, it was light moving it back compared to the way it was pushing it in. And once I came out of that water, I was refreshed, I, was, I felt empty, I felt renewed, a new creation in Christ Jesus. What a tremendous feeling. And the, the biggest thing that I liked about the whole thing is my wife and children were there to see that. That, that, that in itself was just a tremendous peace. Who is the Lord putting on your heart right now? Who are you going to go and ask? Don't be afraid, okay? What if a very timid person hadn't allowed the Holy Spirit to encourage them to invite a person to these meetings? What if there hadn't been a small evangelistic series in that church? What if there hadn't been a satellite downlink coming to that community? That's why I'm excited about what we're calling Momentum here in the Northwest. Because what it is, is a series, an eight night series of reaping meetings downlinked for every church in the Northwest and incidentally around the world because it's on Hope Channel twice a year. The next one is November 10 to 17 of this year. And I guess I have to admit that I'm particularly enthusiastic about it because I've been invited to be the speaker. God has laid a burden on my heart and I'm planning to share a series titled, For God So Loved. It'll be looking at some of our fundamental beliefs from a very fresh, new perspective combined with some of the best in Christian music. I invite you to begin praying now, begin thinking of people that you can bring. I'll have the privilege of presenting messages about the love of God. You know, this postmodern, secular society that we are all a part of tends to be more interested in relationships than in theology. So this series will be based on our relationship with the Lord. If you enjoyed Zeke's story, remember that Northwest Spotlight on Mission comes free of charge to every church in the Northwest, every quarter. If you haven't been watching it in your church, talk to your Sabbath school superintendent or your head elder because they've been receiving those copies. And I know you'll want to watch them in the future. This has been Northwest Spotlight on Mission. <laughs>